As you can see, that is another view of the feed hopper to the reactor. Chris is putting some more material into the pre-dryer unit by the feed hopper at the far end. You can see gas extraction areas, reactor chamber in the distance and in the foreground a combustion furnace. This is the pre-dryer unit and this is the feed hopper for the raw material going in. the exit of the pre-dryer unit. You may or may not be able to see some material falling into the reactor hopper, the feed hopper for the reactor chamber. Temperature of the pre-dryer, 151.9. We've got the reactor set at 5, 420 degrees centigrade. We're sitting on 407 at the moment. Back to the reactor unit. We've been going 10 minutes. As you can see, the char discharge is an enclosed system. We have water jets to cool the char as it goes into the small cut-down 44-gallon drum. Air pump to push the gases through the machine from the condensers. We are starting to get some pyrolysis gases. The pilot jet is they're not uh, at the combustible level just yet. Walk around this part of the machine. What you see here are the two condensers taking the taking the heavy volatiles out of the pyrolysis gases. We're just collecting them here. You can see some of the material, some of the vinegar coming out of the final stage of the pyrolysis, pyrolysis reactor. This particular material is not producing anything at, at the lower temperature. There's no heavy condensable volatiles there at this stage. As you can see, this is the uh, pyrolysis gases igniting with the pilot jets. Uh, we have very wet material at the moment. There is not a lot of energy there. We're utilising all the energy to sustain the process. There is another view of some almond husks and shells that we did yesterday. Uh, we'll add that to, to this view to give you an idea of when you have an energy rich material, how much energy you can get out in terms of uh, producing the flame. This is the flue gas analyzer running on LPG propane. As you can see, the combustion chamber is heating up and the uh, readings are going up and down in sequence with the uh, LPG flame. As you can see, it goes up to 37, 41, 
the LPG is burning, down to 24, 25 when the uh, LPG is stopped. Okay, here's Zoe loading up the pre-dryer, putting in some uh, really powdery poultry litter at this at this point. Uh, you might be able to see the dust and the feathers and so forth coming up. Move around. You can see the dust coming out from the material. Very powdery. Maybe you can see the crook feathers floating in the air. Probably not. That's the feed hopper to the main reactor. Workbench. Furnace. Nitrogen. Tank. Here we can see the in gas being combusted. Char outlet in the main reactor. A little bit of a glow from the furnace. A water bath drum to, uh, well not so much a water bath, but a water spray. Cool the char down when it goes into the container. Reactor condensers, part of them. Small turbocharger, another condenser. Condensate trap for the material that goes into the exhaust uh, flue. This is the flare, which is not running at the moment. We're condensing all the material. Sorry about the air compressor running in the background, but that's what drives the uh, little turbocharger. And here we can see the readout. We can see we're getting a fair bit of CO that's escaping, combustible material. And compared to the natural gas, where 25, 30 parts per million over in terms of nitrous oxide and nitrates. Okay. Just to give you an idea, we because the uh, exhaust exits through the roof and we've got such a high ceiling on this shed, yeah. people ask us, does this smoke? Um, the wind is blowing in our direction. I don't know whether you should be able to see some of the uh, grass and so forth blowing in our direction. And some of the chook, uh, chicken feathers, <laughs> no doubt. But yes, there's no exhaust fumes. Thank you.